Hello YouTube, it's Das Gregor, and welcome back to a Linux tutorial, ramble, review, whatever you want to call it. Today we're going to be looking at installing Solid K and paying specific attention to actually the partitioning of the hard drive. The reason why I've decided to do this instead of a Gen 2 video is because there were a few comments that were directed at me about my Solid K review, about how they really liked it, however, it didn't offer a default home partition option in the install. And personally, I like it that way because I don't always do that, and it's not that difficult to figure it out to do it and create it. But if you've never done it, it always, it's always nice to have someone show you. So there are a couple rules or schools of thought, I should say, in regards to partitioning for Linux. I myself go with a very simplistic approach, whereas I have a swap partition and a main partition for my root, and I put everything inside of root so that I have the greatest amount of space that can just have everything there. There's another thought where you will put in a swap partition, a boot partition, and root, and yet another where some people will put in a swap, a root, a boot, and a home, and yet another where people actually put in a partition just for the applications, whereas one is the system files, one is the applications, your home directory, and your boot, and your swap. As you can see, it can get to be as difficult as you want it to be but when you're first starting out you don't have to have so many different partitions however to have a home partition is a good rule of thumb if you ever are using a distro that you might have to reload on occasion because updates have broken the system it's really good to set aside some space for your home partition so that you could reinstall that OS and then have all of your user data safe and sound on a separate partition. So without further ado, here we go. We are using the Solid K 64-bit install inside a virtual box. We choose our language and I'm just going to throw in whatever time zone that it shows and of course English English for this demonstration it doesn't really matter all right, we'll go ahead and put in our name, yeah, username, type in our password, give the computer a name. I normally like to call them the distribution name for my host name, but it all depends upon your own special feeling there. Now, this is a fresh 40 gig virtual drive that we've created. There are no partitions on it so we are going to say yes we want to create a partition table and create it now this part might already be done and you see this and you go okay well what do i do from here right now we have the swap partition and it's creating a root partition for the second but we actually want to make sure that we have more partitioning for the home so what we need to do is edit the partitions so we do edit partitions it brings up gparted and what we want to do is resize actually since we have nothing at all we can just blow away sda2 and recreate two new partitions if you actually had data you'd have to resize this so you could have some empty space but in this case we're just going to go ahead and delete that partition we're going to create a new partition out of here and we're going to size that to say just for argument's sake we're gonna make that about 15 gigs so we're just gonna kinda run that bar along till yeah 15400 that's okay we want it to be a primary partition ext4 everything else is okay add that and that'll give us 22 gigs left for our home partition so we just want to go ahead and tell it to use the whole thing primary partition ext4 add it and now we have sda1 sd actually this is sda1 sda2 and sda3 
we tell it to go ahead and write and apply. It'll go through, shouldn't take but a few seconds. Close, and now we can get out of Gparted, go back to our installation, do a refresh, and now we see that we have SDA1, which is our swap, SDA2, which we're going to create for our, our root partition, and SDA3 for our home partition. So we go into here, and we right click it, and we assign it to root. We right click this one, assign it to home. Now if we had created more than we probably, it probably would have given us options for user and a few other uh, directory structures that we could have put in there. But for now, we just want those simple items. We go ahead and click forward. Now we want to install grub. Now because this is all at the beginning, we want to make sure it's at the master boot record on SDA. And whether or not you want Plymouth to be installed with the boot splash or not, that's up to you. We can go ahead and hit forward. It's going to show us everything here. And we can hit install. And it begins to copy and install. Now for the most part, almost every distribution out there is quite similar to this. Whether it's Debian based, Ubuntu based, uh, probably even Red Hat. I think Red Hat might have a little bit different, newer form. But the main thing is, if it doesn't give you an option for a home directory right away, you can always use Gparted to either resize your partitions and add your own home partition, or if it's new, blow it all away and create your new partitions like we did. Now, Solid K is an excellent full featured distribution and it's going to go ahead and go through this entire amount of copying which will take forever and that's not really necessary because that main part that I showed you with just getting into Gparted and creating your new partitions and getting your home partition mounted and your root partition is all you really need to know. Not very difficult to do but once you get familiar and comfortable with it you can do the same thing in any distribution install. I hope this has helped you and I hope this kind of points you in the right direction. So for the viewer who watched the video and said he liked that but decided to go with a different uh, distribution because it offered the home directory partition option, now you know how to do it yourself and hopefully this helps you out in the future. Thank you very much for watching. As I always say, if it's morning, evening, noon, or night, whatever you're having, I hope you enjoy it. Thanks again. We'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.